Division I has lost one of its original members with St. Francis disbanding athletics. St. Francis was located at its Brooklyn Heights campus until 2022 when last summer they relocated to their new campus, all three floors of a high rise. The new campus now occupies three stories of the 14 story Wheeler building. It's located atop a Macy's department store. There are no dorms, so SFC is now 100% commuter. And with the relocation, athletics now had to run out facilities which increased costs for athletics. Ironically, the Board of Trustees replaced the president on the day of the announcement, so disbanding athletics was just one part of a sweeping campus-wide change. In its press release, the school was quoted, there are challenges facing higher education institutions, particularly smaller liberal arts colleges in the Northeast, from which SFC is not immune. Among these challenges are increased operating expenses, flattening revenue streams, and plateauing enrollment due in part to a shrinking pool of high school graduates in the aftermath of the pandemic. So SFC Athletics was a casualty of rising costs, changing demographics, and the enrollment cliff facing many colleges across the country, especially smaller liberal arts colleges. The Terriers had played at the Pope until 2022, when with the campus relocation, they then had to relocate their games to the ARC at Pratt Institute where portable bleachers would be rolled in, and attendance for the Terriers' games there were 104, 225, 74, 125, 137, 223, 231, 157, 149, and 189. St. Francis had a bottom 15 athletic budget in Division I, which was the second lowest among private schools, above only the St. Peter's Peacocks. The Terriers have a very long history, having played basketball since 1896. They were New York City's oldest college basketball program. They were commonly invited to play at Madison Square Garden in the 1940s due to their popularity. They were banned from Madison Square Garden in 1950 because they had opted to play marquee games at the Park Slope Armory instead. St. Francis peaked at number 13 in the AP poll during a 21-4 season in 55-56. They qualified for the 54 NIT and 56 NIT back when the NIT was a marquee tournament. In the 54 NIT, they upset ranked Louisville in front of over 16,000 fans a few years after they had been banned from Madison Square Garden. And in the 56 NIT, they advanced to the semifinals before falling to Dayton. St. Francis had never qualified for the NCAA tournament and experienced heartbreak coming so close a couple times. In the 2001 NEC Championship, they fell three points short after relinquishing a 20-point lead. In the 2015 NEC Championship, they fell three points short after missing three free throws with 11 seconds left. St. Francis' arch rival was the Long Island Brooklyn Blackbirds, now the Long Island Sharks. They battled in the Battle of Brooklyn, and the two schools located half a mile apart. St. Francis also had the Battle of the Verrazano with Wagner. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge separated Brooklyn, where St. Francis is located, from Staten Island, where Wagner is located. The two schools were 10 miles apart, and St. Francis had an ancient rivalry with St. John's. At one time, when after St. Francis had defeated St. John's at Madison Square Garden, six terriers kidnapped the St. John's Wooden Indian Chief, Big Chief Blackjack mascot and held him for ransom. The next day, a St. John student reporter stormed the St. Francis Athletic Office pretending to be a journalist for a metropolitan newspaper. The ransom note, as seen here, had demands that needed to be met before Big Chief Blackjack would be returned. St. Francis was one of four original D1 schools to never make the NCAA tournament alongside William & Mary, Army, and the Citadel. By my count, St. Francis becomes the 24th school to drop out of Division I since the 1973 divisional restructure. This only counts schools who fully executed their dropout out of Division I. It does not count schools like the UNO privateers from over a decade ago who announced they were going to drop out of Division I and started that process but ended up not following through with it. Those 24 schools to drop out of Division I are the Cal State Los Angeles Diablos, the Seattle Chieftains, though they have since returned to Division I, is the Seattle Red Hawks. The Catholic Cardinals, the Portland State Vikings, they have also since returned to Division I. The Westchester Golden Rams, the Baltimore Super Bees, who dropped athletics entirely. The Oklahoma City Chiefs, the West Texas A&M Buffaloes, 
the Utica Pioneers, the Armstrong Atlantic Pirates, the Houston Baptist Huskies, who have since returned to Division I and are now the Houston Christian Huskies, the Oral Roberts Titans, who have since returned to Division I and are now the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles, the Hardin Simmons Cowboys, the United States International Soaring Goals, the Augusta Jaguars, the Brooklyn Kingsmen, the Northeastern Illinois Golden Eagles, who dropped athletics, the Morris Brown Wolverines, who dropped athletics, the Birmingham Southern Panthers, the Winston-Salem State Rams, who officially would not count because they never became a full Division I member. They were only three years into their transition, but they had enough of a D1 story that I'd include them. The Centenary Gentlemen, who played at the Gold Dome, the Savannah State Tigers, the Hartford Hawks, and now the St. Francis Terriers, who are dropping athletics completely. St. Francis had the lowest amount of athletic revenue in the NEC. From first to last were LIU, SHU, Merrimack, Wagner, St. Francis of Pennsylvania, CCSU, Fairleigh Dickinson, Stonehill, and St. Francis. St. Francis Brooklyn's men's basketball expenses were 307th nationally. The only two below them in the NEC were CCSU and Stonehill, who is transitioning. The NEC is now down to eight, and they had a press release saying that they are exploring expansion. The only D1 conference they have a chance of coaching is the MEAC, but considering Howard turned down the CAA, I think it's likely that the MEAC schools will also turn down the NEC but the NEC will likely target Howard, Delaware State, and Morgan State. The most likely scenario is that the NEC will be picking from Division II options. One school is Lemoyne from Syracuse. They have a 3,400 enrollment, $180 million endowment. Their $8.6 million athletic budget would be the lowest in the NEC, and their $790,000 men's basketball budget would be the lowest in the NEC. They play at Ted Grant Court, which was renovated in 2016. Another option would be New Haven. They would be the third team in Connecticut, so that would pose the question, would SHU and CCSU block them? New Haven has a 6,900 enrollment, $130 million endowment. Their athletic director is the former Illinois State and Kansas athletic director, and he was hired to move the school to Division I, and he is on record that the FCS level Division I is the sweet spot for college athletics, in his opinion. New Haven has a $9.9 million athletic budget, which is slightly higher than Stonehill's $9.8 million athletic budget. New Haven has a $2.2 million football budget, which is almost $1 million higher than Stonehill's $1.3 million. And New Haven has an $833,000 men's basketball budget, which would be the lowest in the NEC. They play in Charger Gymnasium, which was renovated in 2019. And my prediction is New Haven will be target number one unless they are blocked by the two Connecticut schools. Another option is the Mercyhurst Lakers in Erie, Pennsylvania. They have a 2,700 enrollment, $30 million endowment, a $17 million athletic budget, which is relatively big, but it is inflated by their Division I hockey team. They have a $2.66 million football budget, which doubles Stonehill's $1.33 million. And they have a $912,000 men's basketball budget, which would be the lowest in the NEC. They play at the Mercyhurst Athletic Center, which was renovated in 2021. And finally, the Bentley Falcons. They would be the third team in Massachusetts. So would Merrimack and Stonehill Block. Bentley has a 5,600 enrollment, a $360 million endowment. Their desire for D1 is unknown. They have a $14.8 million athletic budget, but that is inflated by their D1 hockey team. They have a $1.8 million football budget, which is higher than Stonehill's $1.33 million. And they have a $1.13 million men's basketball budget, which is more than Central Connecticut and Stonehill. They play in the Dana Center, which was renovated in 2008. I see the NEC adding one or two of these four Division II schools, and their odds are all relatively even. It's anyone's game. St. Francis played in the Metropolitan New York Conference for 30 years from 1933 to 1963, and all of the teams played in the Metropolitan New York area. St. Francis then played in the Metropolitan Collegiate Conference for a few seasons, where all the schools were located in New York or New Jersey. St. Francis had been in the NEC for every year since the conference claimed its founding year in 1981, and now their longtime rivalries with LIU and Wagner will go extinct. 
as Division One says goodbye to one of its original members, 